Yeah, it's just last side day for the scroll top position, and we're going to move on to something different. Um, we've been looking at kind of the guillotine position and all that kind of thing. Um, I want us to have a look at a few of the different attacks as well uh, from uh, sprawl top. Not only just kind of relying on the guillotine, because the guillotine is great and it's really good, but as we've kind of seen, there are a few variations that we need to be aware of and a few patterns that they can do, which leads to this cycle of trying to tap the neck or you know, going into like a, a, a game roll position. So I want us to have a, another thing as uh, a, a second option. So I've got my sprawl bottom position into here. And I'm not very good at darts, so I'm going to teach you a darts today. I'm going to show you the uh, gate roll and set bit. So I'm going to go darts. Yeah, I'm going to come through into this position. I'm going to go into my Japanese neck tie and all that kind of um, stuff and practice posture and go into my darts. I, I, I suck at darts, so I don't really think I'm sure. That. If James were here, I'd get him to show the darts. So we're going to have a look playing the gate roll because it also fits on with what we've been learning over the last couple of weeks about the position and where we need to be. So the gate roll is slightly different. So, I'm going to take my left hand in and go into the arm. So, do we all remember what we were doing when we were kind of upside down? It's the exact same thing, but this time we're in a better position. Okay. The key with the gate roll is I need to break this arm's posture. I need to bring this arm in. If I just get into this position here, Ben's got a huge gap in between his neck and his shoulder, and I need to close that off before I then go into my roll. Okay, so as a sprawl, yeah, I'm going to bring this elbow and suck the arm in. Okay, so I breath posture and then slide this hand into this position. So if we think about where we were the rest of the week, it's the exact same place. Yeah, so it's the exact same place we're looking at attacking attack the exact same way, but we're just starting from on top. An arm across his chest is that so, strong position, hand shoots through. I like to put my thumb just behind the shoulder, okay? Just to bring it in a little bit, I get a little bit of control because sometimes his arms are going to float around and he's going to start sitting down. So I feel like I get a bit of control if I just have that thumb in that position. Break the posture first, then connect. Okay. Once we get into this position, I'm going to tuck my head down. Okay. If I do, I roll over my face. So if I do this, the entire body is over my face. Okay. So I'm going to tuck my head before I go into my chin. Okay, so all that you do is just get the position nice and tight and tuck your head and then don't roll. And then we'll land on the neck. One more time. So I've hit my sprawl. Yep, and shoot through to the armpit, thumb, hooks, break that elbow, and then just come into here. Come back and screw it. Do the roll. Tuck your head. Same thing as we were doing before. Bring my belly in, squeeze. Okay, so I am trying to hook over, but these short little legs, these little gummies aren't going anywhere sometimes, so I rely on the ball, the big, for big, go. Don't do weights, do here. One, two, three. Because if we roll when there's space, we don't know how this person is going to react. So if I roll the J, uh, the J in this position here, there's two spaces and two tapping where he's going to be throwing his arms, he's going to be getting his head out of position. So you see how his head's kind of separated? So we need to lock it in before we go. So again, for me, that works really well and I feel pretty comfortable there. I'm still not tight. Still not tight. Much better than before I go. Everything tightens up now. When I roll, there's not the same opportunity for him to move. Yeah, I made that slight adjustment, but this bit sticks. Yeah, it's never coming down. Yeah, if anything, it's just going to go even tighter and then in. Okay, so you've got to be super tight when you hit the roll. So, a couple more goes and focus on the squeeze before you start rolling. Okay, it should be, you feel like you're going to tap halfway over, and then when the stomach comes in and you start you know, uh, tightening things up a little bit more like that. That chair on the top of the game. Give it a go. One, two, three. Yeah. Roll Sometimes and, I can't make um, he's, he's, he's he just doesn't want me to get the roll. So once we get into here, get his posture, the rough roll, and he does this, so he posts his leg. Okay. So once I'm in this position, I'm not going to commit to the roll because I can't, I can't roll in that way. Okay. 
Um, there's a couple of different options, like from a wrestling point of view, you can end up in a cradle, which is this, which for Nogi and, and MMA, this is a difficult position for me, because if I just drive into him, he's potentially doing the back of the I can keep some control, as soon as I let go, really some form of scramble, so I don't really sort of do cradles in those positions, so if you did the same sort of thing into here, yeah, I'm not going to hook around the leg, and I'm certainly not going to try and roll him. Yeah, I switch back to uh, to my um, my guillotine choke because he's focusing more on me going this way than he is this. So again, I go to the cup, and on the inside, and around and back into uh, my guillotine choke position because he stopped my ability to roll. You could roll the other way, um, but it's a harder roll. Don't have the same momentum. So if I get into this position here, even if he, I broke him down and he does that, I could try rolling this way, but he's definitely going off my face. And it would be a hard roll to keep control of because he can get onto his knees. So if that leg goes up, I'm probably going to abandon it and start having thinking, taking his back or going into my guillotine position. But have a go, yeah, and see if you can stop the, the momentum by doing that. In catch wrestling, that's called a sprag. There we go, we're going to roll on some catch wrestling. So we're all going to sprag. Excellent, I can see what I'm Okay, one, two, three. Like this, into like a wrestler position. So now it's a lot harder for Ben to break that posture. So even if he goes underneath the armpit and stuff, yeah, it's going to be really hard for him to get the gate over. Yeah. But this is obvious what he does next, he goes straight back into that position. Every time, I try to be, he just shoots my shoulder from that. So, the other options that we've got as well is obviously to take the back. Same thing if I go back. And a lot of that kind of comes from here. I've still blocked the arm, but I can't get that elbow on the inside. So, I can't get that arm in. So, this is another decision point where I don't want to fall onto my back into a guillotine because I'm not comfortable about that and I'm going to stay on top. So from here, I'm still going to pass the arm across and grip. Yep, and then I'm just going to go around and take the back. Okay, so if I can't break the posture of that arm, I'm not going to commit into something where I can't break the posture and take away this place. So I'm just going to take the back. So just do that as a, a little bit of a rep, a little bit of resistance, the arm won't go in, keep the block on the arm, Go around and take the uh, take the back, and then we'll start rolling. Okay, one, two, three.